could I possibly <laughs> creep into your DM? You could. What creep. about could I possibly <clears throat> dive into your DM? You could do all those things, <laughs> but but sliding is is the generic term used. Could for... I chop block into your DM? No, I don't think that one works. But that's because Scott, like, thinks, Scott thinks this shit is so funny. That's because I mean, Scott's old like me. It's these are it dad, these are classic dad jokes right here. Oh, I hear that stuff from my kids about oh, man, dad, you're so sus. Or <laughs> dad, oh, this is you're so this sus. is bussin. That's the one he uses. Bussin. Yeah, things do be bussin. And when I when <laughs> Billy's doing a TikTok <laughs> dance. Billy's he's doing a TikTok dance. Oh lord, are we live? Yeah. Good <laughs> lord. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So let's uh, let's start sliding into this uh, podcast. Yeah. Welcome back to episode three, episode three of the Catch Mark Sportsnet podcast. I'm your host, Zach Swagel. I'm joined here by colleague Scott DeVamp over there <laughs> across from me and uh, also by our fearless leader in the corner, Brent Rath. Good morning. Welcome, guys. Um, Can I make a quick announcement? Yeah, go ahead. Billy didn't win. Billy didn't win. It, it I, I, I didn't win before the podcast went up. Well, we didn't know for sure. The official results didn't come out till that night. True. But there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. He didn't finish last. True. So that means that that you know, if you're running from a bear, he got the other person. Billy. That, that means I hit my goals. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, it was your your goal going into the election was <laughs> don't finish last. <laughs> and, and, that, and it wasn't a, to- a completely lost week, right? Because the Dolphins won. Well, unless that counts as this week. No, that counts. No, that's last week. Okay. That counts, and and they didn't they didn't trade for Watson. So, well, Here. the Dolphins did give me a ton of points in fantasy football. I picked them on defense, and I mean, I didn't score a ton of points overall. I did screw I up mean, the land. Let me just say that was the most bizarro NFL weekend that I've ever seen. The Dolphins had thirty eight points in fantasy. Stafford only got me eight points in fantasy. And the Jaguars beat the Buffalo Bills. I knew he'd get that dig in there. I knew he had to. The only yeah, way it could get weirder is if the Lions won. That's well, they, they did. Lose. They were on a bye week. <laughs> they didn't lose, and they and they had now <laughs> they now have weird. A, they now have a two game lead for the number one pick. So they, they actually two, won two game lead. That's true. <laughs> is that actually a thing? Not like, that number one picks have have turned out in their favor. Not that well, they've been great. They just haven't really equaled winning. Not that, that they know how to use a number yeah, one pick. Right? But yeah. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to take us off track. No. I just thought, no, Billy, uh, better luck next time. Um, I couldn't vote for you because I'm not from Whitehall. Uh, Most Scott people didn't I vote know. For you. Well, I didn't because I'm. Well, he didn't I'm vote. He's not patriotic. Not, I'm not Whitehall. <laughs> Who are you then? Scott? Fruitland, maybe? Fruitland Township. Yeah. So that doesn't count. He's part of those You're people Scott that, that. That's how you answer that question. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they cost us the swimming pool over there in Fruitland Township. <laughs> Oh they man, Billy! <laughs> Billy, you're not gonna get. No oh one my to gosh! See a Billy man cannonball every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it'd be going through the water. Holy! You guys have seen Caddyshack, right? Oh yeah. What's the kid's name on Caddyshack that that's uh, Spalding? Spalding. I'll give you. I'm just ass, picturing man. Billy Spalding <laughs> swimming around the pool with his no, swimming she... cap on. And... I want a hot dog. Duty. I want oh. milkshake. Oh, uh, we, we just went. We just showed how old we are. Yeah, you guys Bill, are getting up there. That's, that's, Zach, that's have, you seen, have you seen? Have you seen Caddyshack? Caddyshack right? No, yeah, I've seen her. Caddyshack. That's but it. I can't like pull characters and quotes out of the air like Scott can with everything. Totally get your foot out the boat. Yeah, but you can you can pull out sliding into somebody's DMs, though, can't you? It's a little different. All right, Zach, what do we got on tap today? So, so we're tackling the the wrap up of the of the fall sports season. Oh, yeah. Yep. Everything's kind of coming, winding down, coming to an end. Obviously, a few of the sports are, or at least in our area, are done. Um, the soccer state finals were this weekend, and, and no one can 
you know, Muskegon was in that was in that run. But everything's kind of coming to close. Um, volleyball, Whitehall volleyball specifically, is playing for a uh, regional well, in the regional semifinal tonight against Grand Rapids Christian. So that should be an interesting match matchup. Uh, Gr Christian is the three time reigning champ um, in Division Two. So I think that they would be uh, the obvious favorite in the region. But, yeah, it should be a good matchup. Nuego is also in there on the opposite side of the bracket with North, North Point Christian. Well, Scott, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? you got to yeah. have – so you got to – I mean – Yeah, we saw the Whitehall district last week. Yeah. You know, we, we were there. Um, I like Whitehall's team a lot. And, I, I'm, and obviously it's not going to change, but it would be really cool to see if, if Ariana Black could have made it. If she didn't get hurt, what do they look like? Yeah. Obviously it is what it is. You can't change that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I like I like the way they play. Um and I, I, you just don't know. And, and a game like volleyball or a sport like volleyball, I mean, we saw it with North Muskegon and Christian, yeah. which you're going to get to as well. But North Muskegon darn near took Christian down. Christian's number one in Division Three. What's I the mean, difference maker in volleyball? Like, what do you what, think? Like, is it hitters? Is it is it your setter? Is it your ability to dig? Like, I, like, what's di- it's hard for me to look at Whitehall and think there's a team that's that much better than Whitehall. I mean, they've got three or four girls that hit hard. They uh, Mott is a great setter, like great libero. Like I, I just like what is the difference maker? I mean, I'm I'm a little, I guess, naive. On well, that. I mean, I think that ultimately because volleyball involves like rotations, right? Like they can't always play in the same spot. Having a you know a, a group of really really good hitters is extremely important, you know, in, in general. So outside hitters, I would say, are you know the most yeah. important. Not that other positions aren't, but I think that that's where you see the biggest gap in in skill, if you will. And I think that Grand Rapids Christian has some. I haven't seen them play, but I've, I've heard they have some unbelievable talent in that in that position. And you've got you, with Whitehall, you've got kids who are as good as you're going to find probably in Division Two at their positions. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like Rain stacks right up there as an outside hitter, mm-hmm. and then Maggie Evans is as good of yeah, a setter yeah. as you're going to find yeah. probably as well. Yeah. So. But again, like you know, like I said, Rain can't always be in that. Right. You know, half time yeah. she's hitting from the back row, and that's yeah. hard to do. Right? You need that depth. Yeah. 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 And then they, you know, Charlie Clint's a good hitter too, like you said. They yeah. Have, yeah. You know, they, they got some good. I mean, they they, they sure really do. do. Um, they don't. I mean, I think they're a little short on the bench. Like, but <coughs> and maybe sure. that's what hurts them. I don't know. But yeah. And then Cindy Shepard, good freshman, promising yeah. freshman. She's got some length to her where she's good at the net blocking. Mm-hmm. In terms there's of no blocking. there's no height in that family, so I think she's probably <laughs> yeah. Good. No yeah. kidding. Holy well, by cow. the way, I, I don't want to take this too far off topic, but I heard this the other day and it blew my mind. Her brother Grayson, who got hurt in football, yeah. he's benching 370 pounds now. And that's just like mind blowing to me. I, I wonder how Matt feels if his son can bench press more weight. I'm sure he can. That is an unreal. Uh, that is an unreal. I just had amount. to throw that in there because I, I heard that. Cool. I'm like, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I. You know, the more impressive. Stunning watch him run. Like that. Like he's legit fast. Yeah. Uh, like legit fast. And then for his size, he's like he's he's pretty amazing. Uh, he, he Tim did. Stout had some videos and was kind of he's kind of chuckling about it. Um, just how fast Grayson actually was. So he took a visit to Ohio. I think it was last week. Maybe it wasn't like an official visit, but yeah. he was on campus at Ohio, where Ohio would, University. Where would he so. play? Like at the next level? Do you think? I mean, he he's not going to be a lineman, right? No, like, I no. Think. I mean, I can. See, I mean, I I honestly can see him being a receiver. Just you know, like an H back. Really? Yeah. Maybe an H back type. Yep. H back tight end type. Maybe. Yep. yep. Possibly. I, maybe linebacker. He'd be yeah. a big yeah. linebacker. Yeah. One of still, one of those yeah. three. I don't see. I don't. I don't see him being. You know, big enough to be on the line, and I don't see him yeah. being maybe an ad. He could yeah. add, he could add some weight though, and become an athletic that's, defensive that's lineman. Yeah, that's you true. know, kids change so much. They high do, school, but I, I can see him playing at the next level for sure. Mm-hmm. It's obviously so hard to tell. We didn't see him play this year, but yeah. and that's what colleges are waiting for too on him. Is right. they want they're going to want to mm-hmm. see what he does in his senior, even though they usually don't wait that long. But because mm-hmm. he was injured, they're going to want to see at least some of what he can do. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. about a basketball player? I guess I've never seen him play basketball. He's a, I, he's played against my son, and uh, he had one of the. A blood <laughs> blood curdling ankle injury. Jeez. I think it was seventh or eighth grade. Like I thought his foot fell off. Like wow. he went down hard. Um, but no, he's a pretty good basketball player too. Like yeah. I, Just I a good know, athlete. I, yeah, overall. Um, but yeah, no, that's huh. that's cool. I'm sure Sydney will be continue to grow, and you know she's gonna be probably great too. So yep, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, and you know while we're on the on the volleyball topic, Western Michigan Christian, who did beat Whitehall twice this year, yeah. Is uh, is a hosting another regional in our area, and uh, you know they're expected to win, and that kicks off tonight as well. So nice, yeah, yep, for sure. Um, this past weekend we had the cross country state finals. Um, a couple big highlights from there. 
Um, Abby Vanderkoy won her fourth consecutive state title, yeah. which is like mind blowing to me. Yeah, there's a couple of cool. I mean, there are a couple of cool stories out of that the whole weekend. Like yeah. Abby, Abby is. And she's she's probably like, oh, I didn't run very fast. And you're like, seriously? Yeah. You know, and like, she's such good. a. And you've interviewed her. Yeah, oh, yeah. She's oh, such yeah. a. She's such a great kid. Oh, I mean, she's a great. She's kid. fun to interview. She and even when she was a freshman, when she had never gone through this interviewing thing before, she was just really kind of bubbly and just it, like she's really good at it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah, on top of being a fantastic runner, it's it's too bad again that she she's had those injuries because she was getting some really just crazy times that she was posting before yeah, it's t- too bad she won another state title <laughs> yeah right yeah you really feel bad for it that's now. i mean you know you're good when you when you have an injury in a down year and you're the state champ yeah like yeah, yeah i'll take it i just would take that nuts. Yeah. just yeah. super cool though and yeah. you know another story the the heart girls right oh yeah their fifth consecutive state championship yeah there's yeah. only a few teams ever in the state that have done five five in a row yeah um i actually talked to i go to church with a lot of the Ackleys and ends and mm-hmm. i actually talked to them they, they're not sure they're done like they, they think they it's they, they think they could have another shot next year which wow. would be kind of so, historic so are you suggesting they're gonna have more kids or what's no going on? <laughs> I, think, right. I think they're done <laughs> um but no like I, I i just think that they think that they're good enough that they you know with a couple people filling in yeah. they could still win it um i talked to them a little bit about the boys and they you know they they felt like they ran pretty well overall yeah and they've got you know it's the Ackleys, the Enzes, the Jaswinskis that are coming yeah. through. But it's, and I wrote about this in the story that I did in our Sunday profile with. Mm-hmm. But it's the other families, the other kids, the other people that that pitch in because obviously you need those front those lead runners. Oh, yeah. And the Ackleys and Enzes have had that on lockdown. Jaswinski's right there now yeah, as a freshman is. already. Um, but yeah, but there's like 24 of those cousins in the Ackleys and the Enzes. Oh yeah, they're a huge family. They, yeah. yeah, and you know, I mean, heart cross country is just blowed up too yeah. like i mean like there's their middle school program has a ton of kids and then and are good both girls and boys right like in their um their varsity programs there's tons of kids and know? guess who so, coaches the middle school it's kelvin, yeah, Ackley, kelvin yeah who who has yeah. had the daughters come through that are just yeah. outstanding and they're in college now tearing it up and then yep. his son clay is doing really well leading the boys team so yep. Huh. yep yep pretty crazy mm-hmm. pretty interesting stuff um some crazy accomplishments and they're yep. definitely an elite class that's for sure um yeah i mean i suppose moving on to football is, is kind of where we're at oh no i know i know it's a tough one um scott what game did you cover last week i covered montague reed city it was our game of the week yeah. go Gu. they did they, right. they played well they jumped on right homeless, away homeless i forgot well how many touchdowns did i say they were gonna win by last week i don't i don't recall that it was two it was two they didn't quite get it. that's impressive they were pretty close um, I may not be as confident this week, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm just, just saying, no, nobody killed me out there, but I may not be as confident. I will this tell week. you, they just, one thing about Montague, they expect to win. When they get in the playoffs, it's not like we hope to win. We expect to win. That's yeah. just, that's how they've been. That's a big part of their success. Now, granted, that's not only right. part of their success, but that's a big part of it. It's just the mindset. Yeah. Yeah. They look like a, like a authority force, you know? the game i thought that you know and i obviously just watched your highlights but i thought that cooey passed the ball great and i and think when that he does that they, they he does it changes them it's doesn't just it a game changer yeah. honestly for them it know? reminded me of how they played against oak ridge and mm-hmm. they did that's how they didn't play against whitehall and some right. of those other teams like that stuff just wasn't there and they mm-hmm. or they didn't make the throw so yeah yeah lance and catholic's gonna be tough though i mean they're it is yeah, but i'd sure rather is. I think they have a heck of a lot better chance than Oak Ridge does running into like a Grand Rapids Catholic yeah. Central, where yeah. where it's Lansing Catholic. And granted, you can't just tell by looking at scores, but you look at some of their scores. And granted, it's an impressive resume, but at the same time, it's not overwhelming. Where there's no way Monty can compete. I think they can compete. They're just going to have to play very well. I think mm-hmm. they can get it done, but they're just going to have to play really well. Uh, and the only one I go to is like Port- they, them playing Portland. They they eked out like a two point win, but Monty really struggled against Portland. So yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. like if you're looking at those two teams in the same quality, yeah. uh, you know. And and again, I I think like Whitehall this year, it depends on what Monty team shows up. I, I think that they're talented enough to win if that right team shows up. And I, I didn't see that Montague Portland game. None of us did. But from, from what we were told, Justin Dennett said they moved the ball. They just, they couldn't, just couldn't score. score. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, a, you know, they missed opportunities when they had them kind of thing. But mm-hmm. it wasn't like they were, you know, stuffed in their, in their own, 
their own end of the field the whole time. You know, but, yeah, you're going to have to cash in on those opportunities yeah. when you get them. Yeah. So, yep, yep. Who knows? It'll be interesting. That's for sure. Um, I was at the Whitehall game, Whitehall Cadillac game. Um, honestly, like a pretty good game, pretty close. Uh, it was 17-14 in the fourth quarter. Um, Whitehall had shots to shots to, to, to make a move and, and, and you know, advance and win a district title but just again couldn't capitalize made some big mistakes down the stretch and it really did cost him um pretty controversial in regard to some of the penalties that happened and and you know some of the decisions that were made but oh you sound like michigan now it sounds no like... i'm not blaming them yeah. i'm not blaming them i mean regardless if you look at the uh you know the outcome just a lot of flags in general both yeah. sides it was just crazy you know a lot of stops a lot of flags <laughs> uh you know a lot of referee meetings if you will just a lot of discussion it was yeah and you hate to you, you don't want the officials to kind of decide the game right. if they don't have to yeah. so it's always a weird it's always a, that weird balance you know yeah. like you want the play on the field to decide i did watch the end of it um online uh it wasn't really great quality it was hard to see a little dark but um yeah whitehall to me gave it away yeah. like like uh, they you know I, I think i turned it on right when kyle had a really really long yeah. QB keeper run all the way down to like the 10. I thought he was going to score and they weren't able to capitalize. I think they missed the field goal after that. Yeah. And like, it just, they were, again, they were there. I mean, yeah, I think they, they, they could win, you know, so. Yeah. It was a, it's a rough one for the, for the Whitehall boys. You know, I thought this, this year was as good a, as any to, to make a run or, you know, to, to win a, win a district championship. So I do think the future's see. bright for them though. Yeah. Like, I do if you too. look at what they, they got, got coming, coming up. Back still. Yeah. A lot yeah. back and a lot of kids coming up yeah. there. Yeah, I totally. I mean, who agree. do they lose to as seniors this year? They they're gonna focus is gone, right? Focus. Um, I'm Reavy, trying to get big ones. Pruitt, Reavy, Pruitt, Pruitt, Pruitt yeah, Bob, um, Blanchard, Blanchard, yeah. Blanchard. But Bowley's still, Bowley's still there yeah, though. Bowley, Bowley's a junior. Um, Kyle's still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, they got a lot of good kids. Shepard will be too. coming back, right? Like, I yeah, mean, you got him coming back. Yeah. You've got so I mean, they, I think I think isn't uh isn't uh, Napier? Isn't he back? Isn't he a junior? Yeah, he hurt his knee against Sparta, but. He's yeah. back, and then you got some younger kids coming up that are good athletes. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be on varsity, but their JV Josh team is really good. Josh and Napier got about ten boys, so there, yeah. there's some other Napiers <laughs> coming up too. I think yeah. I think Evie Evie might have played this year. I think, I think. you're right. Um, so he's coming up, and they 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 got a there's a there's a well should be decent. I mean, yeah. I think they're going to be a good school for sure. Um, but yeah, who's right the future. kid on JV who broke a bunch of like kick return punt returns? He's just fast as can be. I don't know if you've I'm seen sure. that. I know Trenton Ehler played, played the, you know, the tail end of the season up on varsity, or at least some yeah. of the, um, you know, Camden Thompson's, uh, their He's quarterback. Great He's athlete. He's an athlete. You know, so they got, I, I, I don't know who you're referring to specifically. Yeah, I can't think of the young man's name, but he was, I saw a clip against the Montague game and was like, wow. Is Cam yeah. Thompson is good at football? Is he his basketball? I think that basketball is his, you know, his leading leading love, if you will. But yeah. I think that he's pretty talented athlete in general. Yeah, because yeah, he's good in track too. From right. what I understand, yeah. really good. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, the, you know the, he's playing behind Kyle too. You know, which is, who's obviously growing and very young. You know, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see. But what you happens. could put him out at receiver or whatever. Well, that's put what I mean. Camden you know, out there to might... wait with his those long strides. Yeah, a lot of options there. Yeah. I would I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. bright future though. All yeah. in all, right? Yep. Um, skiing Catholic. Skiing Catholic. I, I like I like their chances. I, you know, I, I like their chances. Don't look at me like that, Scott. I know. <laughs> I know. Don't look at me like that. We're, we'll get into this in a minute. Jeez, oh, but I'm going to start by saying, you know, they're they're hosting Lawton at Hackley Stadium, which yep. is cool. Great, super yeah. cool, super cool venue. Yep. Um, that should be an interesting game because Lawton's undefeated. I'm not sure that they've been tested to the degree that Catholic has. Lawton's. The game that sticks out in my mind the most is they beat Montrose, which is pretty good, which Montague faced last year. Yeah. They beat them 69-40. to 40. So can you imagine that track meet Holy back and cow, forth? That was yeah. probably like a four-hour game, too. But they've got a running kicks. back, Jake nuts. Ruiff. I think, I'm think i not sure if that's how you pronounce his last name, but he's got over 2,000 yards and 45 touchdowns this wow. year. Wow. Yeah. That, at, that, at that division level, too, like one player like that can, can make a huge difference. I mean, I – yeah, I know, you know, Ravenna 96, 97, those kind of games. Like, Benny ran behind a really good line, mm-hmm. but he was something special too. Like, yeah. he, if he got to the outside, you were you were He's done. Gone. There was nobody that was catching him, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that'll that'll be interesting. I, I think Catholic is time-tested. I mean, yeah. like, they've they've just been there. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they're they a little bit like Montague, a little bit like Oak Ridge when they get in the playoffs. Like, um, Oak Ridge and always seems to overachieve in the playoffs, even when they're having what we consider a down year for them. Yeah. They always – 
they always seem to go that all of a sudden they're in the regional finals and you're like what they weren't you know um i think catholic's a little like that so it'll yeah. be interesting to see yeah i think they're really well coached you know especially when you look at someone like rebecca who's been there for 40 years yeah and they're really disciplined they don't make a lot of mistakes i just think they're starting to field a little bit too like they Obviously, the one loss was to West Catholic, which there's no shame in that. It's a div- yeah. Division Five school that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was their lone loss. The the overtime win. Well, the let me go back. The the win over Centerville, where they won on a, a last second play, and then a last second win over Oak Ridge. I think that was kind of a big turning point and got them really on a, in a spot where they're but really good teams. It. I mean, that's what they do. They yeah. th- there's they're every team's gonna have those games during the season, mm-hmm. even the really good ones, and that mm-hmm. that's the good ones seem to pull them out, and mm-hmm. that's they did. So. I think they might be our best shot of the three teams left to make it to Ford Field potentially. Yeah. I, totally I forgot. Agree. Are they private or? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. All right. No, they are. I'll they, you it. know, they're private school. They're yeah. Private school. All right. Well, I'll, I'll save it. I don't want to, I don't <laughs> um, want to jump. I don't want to jump the gun. Let's talk about the Muskegon teams going down, right? Shores and, and Muskegon both. Oh yeah. Both out, out, you know, early. It's a little weird. Right? Something weird. feels wrong about that, but you know, at least one of them getting there. It, but you know, I was talking, I can't remember who it was I was talking to. Oh, I was talking to Steve Kerr last night. Um, and, you know, because Steve just won back-to-back state titles with the girls' golf team. Mm-hmm. And and he's like, you know, I, I love that the culture's changed and I love that people expect this. He goes, but he goes, I'm worried that people expect it every, like, and we've talked a little bit about yeah. public schools. I mean, like, and, and you know, you're you're going to, every five or ten years, you, you're you going to get blessed with some talent that mm-hmm. really can make a run. But really, can you compete for conference titles? Can can you win your district? I mean, if you're doing that consistently every single year, I think that's success. And you can be a victim of your success too. Like, this is a people are maybe disappointed in Muskegon's year this year, which isn't a bad thing. But at the same time, they had a great they had a great year, right? Yeah. Like, you become a victim of that. Yeah, yeah. you people just expect that Muskegon's going to be in the state finals every year. Is that yeah. realistic? Probably when, when, not. When we yeah. were covering that Muskegon and Mona Shores game, did any of us think that both of those teams were going to be bounced by the second round? I right. didn't. No, most certainly no, not. I didn't. I I wasn't sure that either of them was had it this year to make it all the way, but definitely not second round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, granted, we also don't see those you know the the opponents that they would face on mm-hmm. a normal basis. Either, yeah, correct. Right? And sometimes it's about matchups too. It you know? is. I mean, like. Yeah, like you, oh, you look at Reed City, you look Whitehall really struggled. They're not well, Montague, yep. not as much, but they, but you know, and you know, same thing with Whitehall and Oak Ridge and Montague mm-hmm. and Oak Ridge. It's it, a lot of it's about matchups. Yeah, yeah. Montague, Montague defends the tee pretty well. We talked about that, and and Whitehall seemed to struggle a little bit with it. Um, but the Montague Whitehall matchup, I think Montague struggled with Whitehall because of all the weapons and mm-hmm. like, um, you know, wh- who do you who do you defend? And then Cal had a great game. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, no, it's. I think Catholic and uh, is the real deal, and I think Muskegon and Mona Shores is a surprise. I, I mean, I, I would have thought one yeah. of them would gone a little deeper, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. Good. I mean, good games from or good game from at least from Muskegon. You know, mm-hmm. Cedar Springs must be the real deal. I would have liked to watch that. Well, game. they yeah they lost to Rockford, which is still going to Division One. They lost yeah. thirty five to six, so that got out of hand. But they lost to Grandpa's Catholic Central forty one to forty. So that tells you right there, man. That must be a pretty good Cedar Springs team. Absolutely. And, and yeah. then they got a win. That, that was the first time they had ever beaten Muskegon, too, by the way. Really? Oh, really? That was the first time. First time in four playoff chances that they beat them, too. Didn't um, – Shores played uh, – um, Caledonia. Caledonia. Didn't Caledonia kind of owe them, too? Last year, yeah. that was like a 43-35 game wow. where it was kind of like a Brady Rose. And I, and I, again, Brady I, Rose special? <laughs> it was. It, he did that, it seemed like, every week where he found ways to make plays and pull it out, but – there was a stud running back for Caledonia. I can't – his name is slipping my mind right now, but he was just that. a load where he ran for well over 200 yards in that game. I can't wow. believe you can't remember his I know. name because you are like an encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah. He is, too. He is. Um, so regional matchups, you know, let's talk about teams that are still in it a little bit. You know, we mentioned Catholic and obviously them having a having a good shot. Montague's heading down to Lansing Catholic where, you know, Lansing's probably Lansing, – Lansing Catholic's probably the favorite, but – I think I always think Montague has a shot. You know, those, those kids that they're confident in every game, no matter yeah. who they're who they're matching up. I mean, OJ so. o- Peterson's back; he's playing. That'll mm-hmm. help. Um, you know, like uh, I Montague still got a couple injuries. I think that uh, uh, Aaron Rolf. I don't think he's back yet. Mm-hmm. Um, no, he wasn't dressed yet. And I don't think I don't think he's going to be back. Um, so small school, like 
Montague is not a lot of kids on the bench that one, two players like that can really make a difference. But yeah, the cats, they, they, they like winning. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the gist of what, what they're about. I, they're gonna have to play well. I think, I think they can win, but I think that they have, they have to play Lansing Catholic. I think if they both play their best game, I think Lansing Catholic wins. I think if, but if they catch Lansing Catholic maybe playing mediocre or just okay, and Montague plays well, I think they could win the game yeah. for sure. Yeah, so. I agree. Yeah, you can't count out Montague. By the way, I have to stop you on something. Since when does Owen Peterson get to be called OJ? Like that's like a cool nickname. OJ, it's always been OJ. Yeah, I've I've always heard that too. Yeah, no one else gets like the little initials. Who, who else am right? I supposed to call it? I call you Scott. <laughs> The vamp. <laughs> That's because he is. He is a vampire. Billy's Stands called true. Billy. His real name is William. Yeah, that's true. So I mean, that's no, cool. Like, but I think having no one back. That's hey, a, that's hey just Bill. another one house more cat. cat. House, house cat. You know? House cat. Yeah. Hey no, I've I've yeah. known I've known Owen since he was little. So it's having him back though that does help big I, time. I, yeah. I, I think so. Just one more weapon. One more. One mm-hmm. more opportunity and and experience too. Right. Like mm-hmm. I mean I think he's he's been there. You know he's a big part of that state yeah. championship team the year before and good athlete. Good oh, see, kid. he looks like a football player. He's got the flow going. He looks like his dad. His dad and I were talking about that. His younger brother Eli is like he's a monster. You know and. <laughs> Chad's gonna be mad at me for saying. Chad says he knows he knows Eli isn't built like him because he's got a butt. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah, Chad looked. I mean, was built just like uh, Owen. And Chad have the long hair too. Let's not talk about Chad's hair because uh, <laughs> there's a lack of it. No, Chad. Days. Chad had short hair in school, okay. but uh, he has short I, I, hair still. It's really short, but like really, no. really short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope Chad doesn't listen to podcasts, so I'm probably free to go. <laughs> like, is it somebody... Jeff Burrell short? It is Jeff Burrell. They they could be twinsies. Yeah, let's just put it that but way. But you know, OJ, I'm gonna start calling him OJ I'm if you don't OJ. mind. It's fine. I don't care. He's got that Clay Matthews hair going on, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure. That's Chad's comment to me because I was laughing about it was that it, grow it while you got it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. What Chad I'm said, just jealous. So. You know, that's yeah. what I am. So. so. What do you guys think? Do you think it's a toss-up game? You think yeah. probably leaning I towards do. Lansing Catholic? Oh yeah, man. I I I'm not gonna count out Montague. I'm yeah. just not. It, they just not I've seen it too many times where you know people are gonna count them out and people shouldn't count them out, but they might and they might in this game. There's just something about them. Yeah, I you agree. Know? I agree. It's on the fence. I mean, last week I picked Montague too. After seeing you know Reed City wipe the floor with Whitehall, I just Montague's like that. They are a tough team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and they and they do have weapons. I mean, that's that's one thing they do have. If yeah. they can get the ball to the, I mean, Dylan's great. Tug's great. Yeah. OJ's back. He's great. You know, like I mean, they're uh, Colton Blankstrom. I mean, they, like they they just have. Again, I don't want to miss any kids, but they they just have what they do have weapons in the skill areas. And yeah. They, get they don't out. have many kids, but they the Paul Olson kid. He oh, had, Paul he, is. He made yeah. a great play. He's a sophomore. He caught a pass over the middle last week and kind of zigzagged his way in the end zone. I go, who's that kid? That's yeah. that's just one more kid that you can go to. Yeah. Well, Paul often. is Paul is perhaps, and I I don't want Paul to hear this, but he's perhaps one of the best athletes that Montague's got. Like yeah. I've coached him since he was little, and um. Paul's been an, an amazing athlete. I mean, in, in youth football, if he got to the edge, it was gone. I mean, and it was just a track meet. I mean, he's gone back and forth. He didn't play last year, I don't think. Mm. Um, he came back and said he wanted to play. He's on the JV most of the year, but he's a big kid, too. He's yeah, he looks like size. Yeah. 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 He, I can't wait to watch Paul play basketball, too. So mm-hmm. Yeah, but, for sure. A lot of, I mean, more weapons than, you know. Than, than I think people people understand or people see. Yeah. Uh, I, we talk about it all the time, but but teams peaking at the right time, right? That's true. Mm-hmm. Seeing Cooey, you know, pass like he did last week, and, and seeing some other offensive contributors. Maybe it should yeah, be interesting. I, I'm not going to count them out. I'm, I'm going to call this one a draw. Yeah. They're going to tie. Yeah, it's going to be a tough pick. And they're going to be on sure. turf this week too, so that's Ooh, maybe that a little different. I think that too. helps. I think that helps honestly. Um, yeah. yeah. So what um, else we got, Zach? Um, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge at Grand Rapids Catholic. Uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Central. That should be a should be a pretty pretty uh, tough matchup for Oak Ridge. Uh, again, you know, the, Oak Ridge is a program that has had a lot of success, and those kids. I really do think that those kids think that they can win every. Oh game, yeah, you for know? sure. So another one of those situations. However, I do think Grand Rapids Catholic Central is that the real deal. Yeah. And it's yeah. just a different animal. I mean, when you got a kid. Kids walking around there that are going to Notre Dame and et cetera. Yeah. You know, they got the Nolan Ziegler kid who's <laughs> yeah. committed to Notre Dame. He's like a 6'3", 6'4", 210-pound linebacker, receiver. He's got, I 
think he might have double digit receiving touchdowns this year. That's crazy. He's just been a monster. And then it's just it's just a completely different different thing you're facing over there when you go huh. over there. Like yeah. huh. Tony Sigmund told us a story about a couple of years ago, how or a few years back when they played when Whitehall played Grampus Catholic and you got a situation where you got this big lineman who's a potential division one kid, hardly played all season, comes out for the PAT, blocks in the PAT, goes back to the sideline. Apparently he was being disciplined or something. But they just got kids just coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. You know, where where you just you just they private? <laughs> they, I mean, I can't think they of are. the last kid from the West Michigan conference that went to Notre Dame. But I I mean I'm gonna let that go till the end. So True. Well yeah. and there's yeah, and then there's the um Oak Ridge is not a school choice either. Yeah, they no, they're, they're not. They're kids, not. Yeah, so that yeah. doesn't that's right. That, hurt, that doesn't help for, for yeah. them. I mean, the whole regional regional finals matchup, right? There is a parochial school in each matchup, and I would I would comfortably like say that they're the favorites to yeah. win. You know, so it does bring up an interesting conversation as to you know whether whether these teams should be in the same in the same bracket, if you will. You guys Brent's, know where, you know where I'm at. Are we diving right into this? I, so, <laughs> we have to. So, like, have to like there's there's two parts of this. Like, when it, when I was an athlete, because I'm definitely not anymore, um, but I always wanted to play the best teams. So I, I can hear the argument about, like, if if I'm in Division three or four or five or six, I want to be the best team in that division. But at the same time, there, there's got there, there, there's a reason there's divisions. There's a reason why they separate some of those things out. Um, there's a reason why we're not like Indiana basketball used to be, where it was a, a classless uh, championship, right? And that's that's to make cause parity. Like they want they want it to be semi fair and equal. And I, I still, you know, I I hear the school choice argument. I I, I understand it. I still don't think it it, it is identical and it's and it's necessarily equitable and you you can't argue the statistics on who wins now you could maybe argue the cause right so that's what i would say there is no argument that parochial schools for how many there are in comparison to public schools win an inordinate amount of state championships in every single sport you can't argue that those are those are just pure numbers right like What's the cause? I think that's what you argue about. Yeah, and is it, is yeah. it because is it because of the kids they're drawing? Is it because they set such high standards across the board for their programs academically? Maybe they're getting a certain kind of serious kid that maybe you're not getting across the board at maybe a public school. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. It seems like that would factor in, though. Yeah, I mean, so you think it's culture? That's you're, I think you're culture's saying, a big part culture. of it. And you got that's a that's a that's a dirty place, Scott, because you know how I feel about culture, and I believe cult, I culture trumps strategy or eats it for breakfast. I think is the quote from Peter Drucker. Um, <laughs> so, like, I, I get that, and I I don't I don't necessarily disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason why it's hard to pick against Montague, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I think I think some public schools have been able to replicate that. I don't know though. Like, I just I still I still find it odd that. You know, like that, a lot of the Notre Dame kids go to parochial schools. A lot of, right. you know, a lot of the kids that end up at the next level end up. Why is that? Is it culture? Is the culture drawing them in? Um, is it better marketing? Is it, you know, is it the fact that they've always won? So people, they, you know, I, I don't know. That's, that's, I don't really have a great answer for it. I just do find it odd. Well, like, here's the thing about private schools or parochial schools, too, is, some of them get to the point where they they don't have to recruit kids come to them sure parents mm -hmm. seek them out kids seek well, them out muskegon's a little like that non-parochial school that yeah. like a lot of people want to go to muskegon yeah you know what i muskegon mean muskegon shores yeah, there's shores, other there's schools yeah. around that people want to they want to just be part of a great program they don't want to you know they they just see the it's the culture it's the winning mm -hmm. it's all those things but, yeah i mean um but the, yeah it's kind of like the chicken or the egg <laughs> argument right. to what ha what came first yeah it totally makes sense. I mean, I think that a lot of parochial schools, you know, coaches and, and you know, people affiliated with, with, you know, the different programs always make the argument, well, school of choice is kind of even the playing field, mm -hmm. right? And I guess I'm not super familiar. Maybe you can shed some light on, on uh, what, what the restrictions are for public school coaches and if they can, you know, if they can recruit kids or if, they're, if it's completely off limits or, you know, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that may or may not, you know, be uh, – 
be okay. Be, be let's within just the say, rules. Let's just say I don't think it can all be policed. Right. I think um, I, the, an example I used in, in a recent discussion I had was you look at a, a really good baseball player from Spring Lake, Blake Grimmer. Mm-hmm. He, he's now going to Orchard Lake St. Mary's, which is an all-boys boarding school. Blake Grimmer couldn't go across the state and go to, like, Macomb, Dakota if his parents or family didn't move. But his family didn't move, but he can go to Orchard Lake St. Mary's across the state. Right. So so right away, there's a difference. But could Macomb, Dakota, come to him and say, hey, you should come stay with us? As long as they don't get caught. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's completely against. I just want to clarify for so many people listening because this stuff can be kind of complicated. Because that stuff happens, and I think even more so, the kids talk to each other. These kids play such high-level travel sports that – that they're like, hey, you, they, they play in the summer from kids from different communities. They're like, hey, come over to our school and play with play with us. Yeah, for sure. And especially now, we, we talked about this a few times, mm-hmm. but with social media, you know, you, after games or, you know, all those kids can find a way to contact each other if they want to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there, I think you have to raise the question, too, is it a money issue? Is it a, is it a dollars and cents issue? Do, do parochial schools have more dollars to maybe put towards – those types of things do they have better boosters is is are the facilities better like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i think that that that's got to play into it at some point right yeah um yeah i don't i don't know i think it's it's an interesting thing um i mean when you when you look at back uh is cast tech's parochial right detroit cast tech no that's a it's They're a public, public. it's okay. a public yeah but i it's mean still a, it's still a tech school though it's yeah, still, but they're getting a certain kind of student. Yeah. So when you when you look back though, I mean, boy, in Division One to to ninety nine, I mean, Detroit Catholic ones one, two, three in a row, four. They've got four state championships since the since then. Cast Tech is the only other school I think. Man, Rockford's mixed in there, but like. And you go down a division, right? Mona Shores won two in a row, but then it's De La Salle, De La Salle, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, Warren De La Salle, um, Bloomfield sprinkled in there, um, Muskegon sprinkled in, there, sprinkled in there, Detroit Martin Luther, right? Like, I mean, it, it really, and that's just football. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, they're winning them. Like, they, the, the numbers are there, you know, like, yeah. it just seems odd to me. There's varying degrees, too. Like, if you look at a De La Salle, they have a few more resources than, of course, like a Muskegon Catholic. It's a lot yeah. bigger school for starters. For sure. Then you're drawing from Metro Detroit. I mean, Dan Roan, who's a great coach, and he doesn't, he probably doesn't need a lot of these, these, this extra benefit that he might get, but because he he does, he's done well. He's won everywhere he's been. But he not only is he a winner, but now he's getting that system where. They've got like thirty assistant coaches. I'm not exaggerating when I say that either. And some big names. People yeah, I mean have, that's the resource. And some and stuff, influence. Right? There's people with some influence and maybe some money over there too. That right. They're not all kids that come from money, but there's maybe some, yeah. some families that do. And but they're drawing from a wide area, and kids come to them because they want to be part of that culture. They want they want to win. Totally makes sense. But Just, is that fair? Is that fair to? Yeah, know, I mean, and, and and you can make the same art. I mean, it's I don't want to just. You know, I don't want to just separate out parochial schools. I, I think it's any private institution. You look at what Emily Bates did, mm-hmm. like where they created a prep school that was almost not even a real prep school. It wasn't even right. a real school. Um, I'm gonna say it. Like, it, it, like I think that I think the sports academies. I think a lot of those things as as well. Um, you know, they they shouldn't be allowed to compete. I don't think they are in a sense allowed to compete in the state. Stuff, level stuff um i i don't know i think uh, i think anything like that um i don't i think there needs to be separate divisions for those things i guess i it's not that they shouldn't be able to compete it's more that like it's it's almost an unfair advantage you know it'd, it'd be like like uh the three of us decide we're going to create a, a a sports academy university secondary education and we take all the best kids from montague whitehall oak ridge you know, Muskegon Catholic, Muskegon, we put them all together in every sport. Um, but the total attendance, we only have it at the division. Right, competed a lower. What would we call division. that? Catch mark what? We would yeah, call right. our nickname, the Jeez, Condors stop. or something? Like the catch con- mark ca- Condors? The Condors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up with some alliteration to catch mark the Wildcats. That's what we did. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's just and our not colors would be blue and white. <laughs> <laughs> kind of on this note, do you guys think it'll ever change? Do um, like you think that you think that the MHSA will ever divide up those, you know, the divisions? Boy, um, 
No, I, I don't. I don't. I, I think that they. I think it, they're. They wouldn't want to to step in the mud, and I think right now I'd take a lot. I think to to get them to change. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll ever change. Um, but stranger things have have happened. You know, like um, I just think of stuff like you know to win a Detroit Catholic League title is almost better than a state title because of who <laughs> they play. It's right. some, something about that is like, you know, come on now. I mean, the West Michigan Conference is good, but no, nobody's going to trade a conference title here for a, mm-hmm. for a state title. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, for me, never say never. That they'll never change, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Yeah, yeah I don't. And it, there's been different discussions. Should there be a multiple multiplier? <clears throat> multiplier. Like right. if you have a, a school with 300 students that's private. Or whatever does should they be considered a 600 student school in competition yeah. Yeah. would that work I, and so that that is something that i definitely have a problem with when you start when you start uh dividing schools by by students um all students are equal but not equitable like so like if you had, like, like you said scott if you've got a, a 300 student all boys school that's a little different than a 300 student Mix school, boys which they do have. Yeah. There is a multi multiplier for like an all boys school. Like North Lake St. Mary's, they have to double the, their enrollment. Right, but do they? But if you have a, a, a you know a co co ed school where it's boys and girls, they just go by the. You're talking enrollment. about a multiplier overall, right? All yeah. So right. could that for, co ed school yeah. be for all private? Could that co ed school be heavy boys, mm-hmm. light girls? You know, like meaning that yeah, they can control all that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, Their like like schools. we have 300 boys and 100 girls. And that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like, and, and again, I use the word feel because I don't really have any, any metrics or data sure, to, yeah, to yeah. back that up. I feel like there's a little bit more flexibility with parochial schools and their, their ability to, to do some things than there still is in the public school sector. And I just want it to be fair. I mean, I, I think that the, the number one thing is, is, is it fair? And if it is, if we can look at each other at the end of the day and say it's fair, then okay. I don't think the stats – that match, match up to say it is fair. Um, you know, I, I would say parochial schools probably make up maybe 10% of the total schools in the state of Michigan, yet they win probably 50% of the state titles. Anywhere else in society, if there was a statistical matchup like that, nobody would be like, yeah, it's fair. And I'm, I'm playing yeah, yeah, devil's yeah. advocate here, but you'll hear from some of the parochial schools will say, well, these public schools have the same opportunities as us to build a good program and to build a culture. Why don't they do it? That's because that's that, not. But that's but that's what recruit. you hear. That's what you hear. You can't recruit. Yeah, I feel like I, it really comes. I mean, that's that's like fairly mm-hmm. simple. You know, that's a, that's a huge and I and I honestly don't know enough about the rules. I mean, can a can a parochial school in fact recruit? Can right. they go and I talk? Mean, well, to I don't, that's what I, they have to. Well, if you're a parochial school, you don't have a a, a township that you're drawing from because you're a private. Right. You don't have a school district that you draw from. But can you? You approach? have to keep, get your kids from somewhere. Yeah, you can because. Right. You, but so you're like, not for sports, though. So let's you, talk you, about. You, you want to do it for school? Can you come to attend our school? So, get a great education. You can play football. Too. So you can't. You, you know? can't use sports to. No. Te- yeah, but so think about this. Think about you're you're a family in, um, in a in a terrible area let's say, and your kid has an opportunity to go to a school where they're going to get great education. The school might find a way to get them to the school, like mm-hmm. transportation. They're going to get to go there for free, and they're going to get to play athletics. Like, are you, as a, as a parent or as a kid, are you going to turn that down? The facilities may be better, the whole nine yards. So if I have an opportunity to go to that school, I'm absolutely going to that school. And, and, what the parochial schools are saying is, well, public schools, I don't think it, they have the same ability to, to, to do that. I don't think, um, you know, uh, again, I don't, I just don't see it, right? Not like, to mention the financial aspect, right? Like right. nobody wants to talk about that, but that's like not every family, especially in our area, can afford, can afford you know, a parochial school yeah. maybe, right? You know, you know what would be interesting to talk to about this would be Pat Counts and Jeff Stark because they both – I remember hearing stories from Pat, and he brought it up again on the on the first and ten show last week when he went, when he was our guest. I heard that, yeah. His brother went to Muskegon Catholic, played football for Muskegon Catholic. Pat remembers going and watching all those games. He was close to going there himself. Yeah. Can you imagine how the course of Montague football might have changed had Pat gone and played there? Well, if would Pat tells it, it probably would have never been what it is at all. <laughs> but like you know, um, no, yeah, no. But, I mean, but then I, Stark almost went there too. Jeff yeah. Stark, from what I heard, 
was thinking about going to Catholic too at yeah. one point. So that I mean, who knows where things change? But well, and in the, and at that time they played too. That was a bit like the public schools had no recourse. Like mm-hmm. Jeff couldn't even have chosen to come to Montague and play, right? right? right. Like um, right. or come to Montague to go to school. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, right. Like <laughs> you know, I I don't know. Like I. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like this, like I do about a, a lot of the stuff. Like we're not, we're not really talking about the, you know, the truth behind a lot of this, and yeah. and it, it feels a lot like you know Zach mentioned, and this might be for will be another podcast talk, but students cashing on their likeness, right? Like the NCAA and uh, are always talking about her. Uh, well, it's a student athlete. Well, come on, and these kids are adults playing college athletics. They can't make money off of themselves because it makes them an amateur yet a university's making a billion dollars you know i mean look at look at michigan state michigan notre dame uh, ohio state you know i'm not going to mention any of the sec teams because i just don't like them but um <laughs> but you know no i mean seriously like in alabama uh mm-hmm. you know in lsu you know those those teams are like give me a break you know like let's talk about the truth here what's what's best for the kids too, you know, oh, it's a game changer too. I mean, if you look at Michigan State, Matt Ishbia, you got him and and you've got uh, Dan Dan. What's why am I, why is his name slipping my mind? Dan Gilbert. I mean, they're just those guys are loaded yeah. and they're get, they they're lining up to give money to Michigan State, but right. now Michigan State football players are getting paid. Yeah, I mean, they're literally getting paid because you can under the NIL. Yeah, you know, well, and, standards. And, yeah, yeah. And and I I get all of the the negative things that can come out of that too. Like I mean, now it becomes the school that can market the best. I mean, right. it's a little like the Mac PC thing. Like you know, Zach and I, <laughs> Zach and I are, you know, Mac markets really this. well, and so they get loyal. No, um, but <laughs> like in all seriousness, right? Like it's it becomes a marketing thing. Like you could make more money coming here because we have a better brand. You know, mm-hmm. like. I, I can see it, but that's fair play at that point. Like, yeah. you know, and I think, I think there, we hold on to this illusion of, of, um, of the amateur athlete and it just, it's, it's an illusion, right? Like, and I, I, can we just pull the veil up and like, let these kids you know, and just school be better at marketing. But then that goes completely against my, my high school. Right. Take, right? I was just like, going to say that. Yeah. Um, I think the difference at that level is they, they, those schools, and the kids do have a little bit more of a choice on where mm-hmm. they go, yeah. right? Like, um, even with the rules with the transport por- transfer portal and some of those things, I mean, I think that 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 is they have a little bit more say in that, and I, I do like those those types of things. But I don't know. I there is a reason why parochial schools are better. They are definitely better um, across the board. Not to say the public school can't put together a great team and, and make runs and back to back, right? Mm-hmm. But they they tend to be better. Um, you know, overall, you've seen back to the NIL too, real quick. You you're already seeing it leak into high school sports where kids don't want to play their high senior season because they don't want to jeopardize any potential NIL opportunities coming up for them. True, for sure. True. I, and I mean, you know, that's a whole different conversation. I think it's funny because so many kids think they're going Division One. I, I know. Uh, you know, like in in that the ones that will actually be able to cash in on their likeness will be in my mind few and far between and if if you're able to go to a division three school and cash in so be it I do mean, you know right. do you know where one of the the, the, the movers and shakers that kind of helped get this whole thing rolling that she's yeah. from yeah Spring i do Lake? i do yeah yeah she went to western michigan christian chloe mitchell's her name she graduated yeah. a couple years ago she's she 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 Aquinas. that's she's volleyball yeah. there but wow. she was one of the really driving forces she wasn't the only thing Does she have only a one. massive following she does now um she did because she was moving this and uh also would it would it not be hard for for small small school districts to survive in this situation because because of it the limited is, though, viewership Zach. i mean like True. yeah i mean you look at it that's why um that's why they change football too why you know like i i think it already is small school districts are are, are struggling and to do that I, I mean so i don't know that this pushes it any farther i mean consolidation of districts started happening a long long time ago i mean like mm-hmm. when when i was a kid you go, there was a ton of elementary schools in the montague school district all over the place right like whitehall too and shelby too and they you know they realized that it made more sense buses were cheaper than buildings and you know they start consolidating us and that happens all over i mean nobody wants to talk about it and this is a topic that would go over like a 
lead balloon, but <laughs> my, does it really make any sense that Montague and Whitehall are a mile apart? I mean, no, I mean, it, you know, in a lot I mean, of ways, no, in a lot of ways, no, ways, right? Like, sure. and so, but that's not going to change, right? And, and, and just the thought of it, if, you know, we'll, we're on camera, so you saw Zach and I probably both went like this a little bit, <laughs> like, you know, but overall, like, I, I think that that, the idea of the really small school, um, Hey, that's changing a little bit. Yeah, I, by the I it's think. going by the wayside for sure. Yeah. Well, even Muskegon Catholic Central, their enrollment's really. Oh yeah, they plummeted. Yeah. And they're they're Division Seven because of their co-op with Western Michigan Christian. Otherwise, they'd be Division Eight right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, how many football players do they get from Christian? Not many. I was gonna say like Joe Waller. They're they're really good running backs from Christian. Do, do they, they go back and forth? Can they like year by year? Can you decide like hey? We want you know, it. we're not going to do a co-op this year. I think it's generally like a, it it's might go by two years. Two or three-year deal. Two or three-year deal. No, okay, okay. And I think there was times where maybe, like, because North Muskegon used to have that co-op with Christian, and it right, just, yeah. just didn't work out for them. Mm -hmm. and, and Catholics had it now for, what, two, three, four years, whatever it is, and it's worked out okay. Do they get as many players as they'd like? No. Yeah. But, you know, it's just it's something they want to keep going because they feel that overall it suits them. Hmm. Does Catholics still fill the basketball team? They do. They do? They're, um... They're, uh, they, they actually were pretty good back in the, uh, I don't know, what, 10 years ago? You might know they had the uh, twins. Rebecca when they had the Hornacks and yeah, they had uh, yep. Jason and Rebecca. Oh, they got to the mm -hmm. semifinals that year. Did they? Yeah, yeah they were pretty good um, then. but They were really good. They were, they? Yeah, really good. Jason Rebecca was a really good athlete. Him mm -hmm. and, you know, that's the son of Mike, the longtime yep, assistant yep. coach there. He was an all-state, I think he was all-state in basketball and baseball, if I remember correctly. He, he was, played yeah, baseball Grand Great Valley. baseball player. Yep. Um, and the Hornacks were just massive. Like, yeah. they, were, they, were, they were twins and they were probably – I don't know, six three, six four, just big, big bodies dudes. down low, and mm -hmm. they're they're you know both giant weapons. But they're still really good at baseball. Catholics got a really good baseball program. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, football is obviously that's always going to be no matter what anyone thinks or wants. Football is always the oh the yeah, driving yeah, force yeah. at that school. They've had good sports though, all the way around. But they're solid yeah. across the board. Baseball's won won a state title and been mm -hmm. close several other times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huh? For sure, it is what it is. I I I think there's. I think it should be more equitable. I don't know that they'll ever split. To answer your question, I think that it. I think it. There's there's ways that it could be more equitable across the across the spectrum. But I I would say that overall in sports too, there there's some things that I feel as passionate about as well. And in, in basketball, I I think it's a farce that that a school like Montague plays a school like Spring Lake in the same district. Right, not not because of inequitability in the schools themselves, but Montague's like 450 kids, and Spring Lake's like 900. Yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. like, so I would be. I think across the board, there's some other things that I feel just as passionate uh, passionately about. Like, why don't we have multiple divisions in basketball like we do in football? Right, like why don't we split it up and, and get to instead of four have good to eight? I you heard know, there's like, been a push for that. There's been coaches I, I pushing would love for that. To see it. I mean, I th I think that. I, you'd think that in a sport like basketball too, you you field ten. You're ten. This, the numbers would actually maybe impact it even more, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. where where you're, you know, your your five through ten are going to be considerably better at a Spring Lake than than mine. Not that your starting five or six might not. You might be pretty close, but you know, like it, you're just throwing guys off the bench that are just as good as the guys that just came off. Where you know you might drop a little bit, so. I, I would love to see that more equitable. You, you know, there's a whole bunch of other examples, I would say. So, but no. What else we got, Zach? That's it? We're wrapping it up for sure. We're That's it? There. We're done in under three hours? I thought this yeah, was a three-hour no deal. Kidding. <laughs> so, you you no, Montague wins? Is that what I heard? We probably should go through and pick, you know, and pick real quick. I'm not taking Montague. I can't. Uh, Lansing? <clears throat> okay. Parochial schools, you, man. Yeah, you got, you got, you're going Catholic all so the way. So all three of my games are going to be parochial schools. I have Lansing Catholic over Montague, uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Central over Oak Ridge, and then I have Muskegon Catholic Central over Lawton. Same, Scott. Yeah, let's start out in Division Seven. Okay. I'm going to go. I like Muskegon Catholic in that one. Why are you, going, really why are you giving me that that, that <clears throat> Scott? Because he doesn't know what he to. wants to. He doesn't know what he wants to pick yet. I know what I want to pick, but I want him to listen because he's trying to stay ahead of you me in the picks. Me go, you, went, you made me go first last week too. <laughs> Then you copied me. You guys keep tying every week. I now you There's got me a, hooked. I look every going, week. Yeah, I'm like, that, I'm like, oh, the camp went 12 and 0, and then I'm oh, like, so did oh, Zach. Zach did huh, too. How did that yeah. happen? Scott. Even though I picked <laughs> first, <laughs> Scott, I'm not with you on this one. He yeah. did pick first, and he made a big point about it. No, I like I like Muskegon Catholic. Although I'm really looking forward to that game. 
Yeah. yeah. Just because I want to see. Is that going to be the best game, you think? And that's our game of the week. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to see, are, is Lawton, are they truly legit? What are the, what do they got? What do they got from a scheme? They game? don't have a ton of playoff experience, I don't think. They don't. This is their first ever district title. Yeah. So hmm. first ever appearance in the regional. But they got the running back. They got some size by the sounds of it. The Catholics got some speed. They got the tradition. They've been here before. They got experience. Mm -hmm. But So I like them. I like in Division Six. I'm going to probably go with a, a minor upset special on Gold Montague. Ooh. Yep. Wow. And then then I got to go with Grandpa's Catholic. I mean, you know, I like what Oak Ridge does as a program. I really, really respect their program, but yeah. they're just really up against it this week. I think everybody knows that. Yeah, for sure. I I want to see – I want to see Oak Ridge win. I want to see Montague win, and I want to see Catholic win. So I, I think I'm going with you, Scott. I'm going to give the U the edge this week. I I feel like they got one more in them, and and I I think they're going to come ready. Uh, I won't be surprised if it flips on us though. Um, and I don't think Oak Ridge has the guns to win that game. Um, and I think Catholic wins. I think uh, I think you're right. I think Muskegon Catholic has an opportunity to go pretty deep. Um, yeah, because if if they win this, then they're looking at maybe a Lumen Christie. It, they get the winner of Loyola and Lumen Christie, which again tough games. But you get to the semifinals, you expect they're it all to tough be tough. Games, yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean that Catholic has a shot. It would be tough, but they have a shot. Yeah, for all sure. Right. Well, we got basketball coming up on the horizon. You guys sure know do. I, I do love football, but like basketball is kind of my like that's my jam, right? So, what's the kid slang for that? Zach, I'm calling it kid slang. Like, what's the what's the hip slang? My jam. Um, you would say basketball is bussing. Basketball <laughs> is bussing. Did I say that right? Yeah, Did I do that right? Yeah. Oh, my kids are cringing right yeah. now. I guarantee it. Yep. Billy's doing <laughs> Billy's doing TikTok dances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, Billy, gotta, we need a camera on you. If you're ever going to do a TikTok dance, the camera has got to be Him on Him and Cody have been practicing. <laughs> um so, what do you guys think? Is it going to be an exciting year in the uh, basketball arena? Do we got any teams that you think can make some noise? Yeah, you know, I think that I think that our area in general, um, and compared to football, hasn't been a standout. You know, oh, but sure. there's there's some good teams for sure. You know, I'm excited. I think Muskegon's going to be good again. Yeah. I think that I think that I'm interested, really interested to see what how Puffer does. Mm -hmm. you know, really, Whitehall's Nate Artem went over there, and and they've just been increasingly getting better. It seems like every year, so. I'm excited to see see how they do, and then the West Michigan Conference will be will be great too. I think there's like four or five teams that are all pretty decent. So I think West Michigan Conference will be wide open. I, I still like me too. Yeah, I, 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 I like I like in terms of the top of that. I like Oak Ridge, Montague, and Whitehall to probably ultimately contend for that. But you can never count like on Ravenna. I like Tossin Ravenna. Ravenna. I do too. Ravenna. The BB gonna, kid's really good. I talked to Connor last night, my son, and like he's. He he's Ravenna was the first team that came up. BB's legit. He's yeah, a good he's player, a good and player. they got some good supporting players around him too. It was kind of fun. The kids all played, you know, West Michigan hardwood this summer, and like mm -hmm. seeing, you get to see some of these kids that you only see once in a while, right, like yeah. throughout the year. Like you get to see them play more, and like there were some kids that I uh, BB was impressive. Cam Thompson from Whitehall was Zach and I've talked about Cam, uh, young, but I, Cam's a real deal in my mind. Um, you know, I, the kid that I like the most, believe it or not, is and is a, a joseph from oak ridge wow oh, yeah. i love that kid like, weaver's good too right weaver's great Weaver. like weaver's a gamer man like yeah. that that kid like i i was joking like he sometimes he walks out on the court and you're like oh that, he's probably okay like and then he just busts you you're mm -hmm. like yeah i mean he kind of reminds me of um oh i can't think of his name plays for the maps um european guy is that Don Chick, whatever his name is? Yeah, Luca. Is it Luca? He kind of, oh, Weaver kind of reminds me of Luca. He's got yeah, a little bit Garrett of. Does he wear the t shirt under his jersey, too? Is he, he does. He's like a right handed, <laughs> he does. He's like a right handed Chris Mullen, basically. Yeah, yeah I'm getting, I should be getting a lot of Oak Ridge props right now. I'm high. <laughs> but uh, Joseph, man, like, like he's a big kid. He looks like a football player, but he, he, he was tough for us yeah. last year. He I mean, move. he can move and he, he's got skills and like, He's only going to get better that going into this year. So I that, love watching good big big dudes. Oh yeah, I love it's because it's it. it's like a not lost art. It is it lost is, art. It's know? overlooked. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Those things. it sure is. You know, you don't see him as often anymore. No, yeah. but sure. I like Muske Muskegon's going to be loaded. Yeah, Grand Haven, which beat Muskegon in the district finals last year, they're going to be loaded. They're really good. Um, the the team that you can do the what if game. The what if game for me is Western Michigan Christian because they've got the Owen Vernado kid. Oh, who's, Vernado's mm -hmm. a, he's a, he's stud, a stud, but they also used to have Chloe Mitchell's brother. Yeah, he. I'm um, Kellen. 
who had gone out to some private California. school or prep school out yeah. in, in California. Now he's back in Where'd Spring he Lake. Where'd he go? He didn't go to a public school out there? He went to a no, prep <laughs> school? No, no. It's not private. It's prep. There's a difference. Oh, okay. So, okay. Prep, okay. There is a difference between a prep. You were I like the Imani Bates thing. That was a prep school. Yeah, I know. I know. So, but he came back, and I think he's got an injury. I'm not sure if he's playing, but I think he's even going to Spring Lake High School right now, from what I heard, from what I gather. Oh, freaking Spring Lake doesn't need to get any better. We got yeah. I don't know if he's we playing. Gotta... I don't know if he's playing hoops or not. I don't know that. He better be playing. He was good. He's that kid really was good. really good. But if you like, had him together with Bernardo, two six five six six kids that could they, do everything, they played together. They, they we, did for two years. Yeah, yeah. My, when Montague played them, the, both those guys are on the court. Those guys are really good. They, young, they were young. young. Guys. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, we, we I'm getting excited already. It's mm-hmm. going to be fun. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Like we, I think I uh, coached a travel. Like we went to a tournament with some of the Montague kids, yeah. and uh, they had a team with Bernardo. Um, and one of our kids, Tate Stein, who's a tremendous basketball player, was on that team too. Again, Tate was already on that travel team, but it was Bernardo, Tate, it's a couple kids from Hart, uh, Dayton Cole. Wow. I mean, dude, I've I did I've seen less dunks in NBA games. It was ridiculous. The kids, <laughs> our kids, walk down the court and they're like, "What? This is like the West Michigan like All Star team." It was mm-hmm. it was pretty amazing. But yeah, Renato, he might have been the most impressive kid out there in that in that tournament. Just he had all of the pieces, you know. I mean, Dayton's a physical, raw athlete that just can do things, but. Renato is a gamer. Like it's, Who, who's it's, the guy that plays for the Celtics? Last name's Brown. What's his first name? Is it Jalen? Not Jalen Brown. Is it? What's his first name? Uh, I don't know. I don't follow his right. Anyhow, that is Owen Bernardo's uncle, I want to say. Uncle really? and cousin. Really? They're related, yeah. Yeah. So he's got that basketball bloodline. Got that basketball sure. IQ. Um, somebody, something else I saw. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Jalen. Yeah, there you go. No Jalen Brown, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who played at Cal. Don't mm-hmm. ask me why I yep. know that, but you, had, you, you said I got all that crap in my head, and I do. You do. So. You're ridiculous. Keontae made Grand Valley's team. I don't know if you saw that. Barnes, oh, Barnes from Orchard yeah. News. Oh. So we were. I was actually looking the other day. Uh, we were gonna get tickets and go down with the kids and watch watch a game. And he's on the team. Good for he's, him. It's really cool. It's funny because he's little compared to the, the oh, whole geez, Grand Valley yeah. team, you know. Yeah. But like, it, it's good to see. Good for him, you know. I'm glad he glad he's having some success there. That's a big. I mean, Grand Valley's like it's legit. D two is. I mean, there's good players there. Like it's you know like so. This is I, an opportunity for him. You know, I've covered him a lot too, and this is really that's how you look at it. It's an opportunity. He has a chance. Mm-hmm. There's nothing guaranteed. But yeah. it's great to see that he's on the roster. For sure. That he gets to go through all that stuff and but it's yeah. a different world. It, it is. I was a little surprised last year he didn't get more looks, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like uh I don't know. Like he just he's any other kid in a different team and I don't know why. Like he's not tiny, he's not big. But I've seen a lot of six one guys in the Muskegon area get get a lot of looks, and and maybe he was at the Division three level, and they weren't looks that he wanted. But I didn't see mm-hmm. like I, I didn't hear a lot of buzz anywhere else, you know, for a kid that he can obviously score, you know, and um, he's obviously a great athlete. So it'll be interesting. I'll be keeping an eye on him for sure. So. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. But anything to add? Uh, I got Montague winning it all in basketball. I'm just letting you know right off the bat. That's a little much. I'm just telling you, you know, you guys mentioned Paul, <laughs> Paul Wilson, little Isaiah, little Isaiah, just not little. You say win it all, you talking about? I wouldn't think you're win the conference, not okay. the state title. I thought Jeez, you might go into yeah. Rosen. Don't, don't. Clarify. You said win it, when I hear win it I mean, it all. I would be in, I would paint myself blue if they went to the president. <laughs> you already are all blue but, right now. But, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, well, the big thing that Montague is limited by, it's definitely the coaching staff. Uh, Dave and Randy. I mean, well, that's that's a, that's kind of. I don't of a know so much about Randy. I think he's fine. The Dave guy. I don't know. I'm about just kidding. Dave. I love me some Dave and Randy. <laughs> so sorry, guys. I had to take a shot. But, um, no. Yeah. No. I I think it's going to be fun. Fun year in basketball. Dave is built like a block of granite. Uh, I said uh, that because that, he. They joke you know, about that. You know I mess yeah. with him now. Like I call, call him Granite. Because I wrote a story about him last year, and I said he's still built like a block of granite. He's a big dude. He's a big <laughs> he dude. I hear like that's the last person on the planet you want to arm wrestle. Yeah. Oh, you do not want no. That don't even no. Or anger. Or in anger. any way. <laughs> he's a big. He's a big teddy bear. Yeah. He's a big teddy bear. You know. Um, yeah. So no, I I think it's gonna be it's gonna be great basketball this year. I really sure. I agree with you, Zach. West Michigan Conference has been down for a few years. Yep. Yeah, I think there's going to be four or five teams that I could legit see winning it. We didn't know? mention Me North Muskegon, but they always come up with something, don't yeah. they? They do. I think uh, Young is a good ball player. I watched him this summer, and like he's going to be. Solid. They are young. It, I mean, I know. Yeah, they have we young, well, they are true. Young, you know, yeah. they've they've had some pretty good 
junior high, you know, t- some talent coming up. Um, the uh, what's it, Moat kid, um, or Moat kid, uh, went yeah. to, to school with his mom, but he's a big kid. If they could, I mean, yeah. he's the one that made that play of the week catch, yeah, or it was on, yeah. The, yeah, Carson. I mean, uh, they, they could be good too. I mean, and um, our McManus is back, one of the Ma- McManus brothers back, right? One of them, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I don't know if it's Brendan yeah. or Troy. Ripster does do, do, you know, he does a good job. Ripster yeah. does a good job. I, I don't know if they've got the horsepower to stay with some of the other teams, but no, it'll be good. Anyways. And Belmonte, Belmonte's not like that's not his number one sport, but is he, is he got blonde hair? Yeah, kind of like five. He's the one that hit the half court 10. short against Oak Ridge. Yeah. Half court shot against Oak Ridge last year that won it. Did you really, see that? Really, really? No, I, I I remember it, but I didn't know if I saw it. He's really fast, yeah. really athletic. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah good. He, kids, I remember he's, watching. He's pretty, him. he's pretty I, built. Like he's a yeah. kid that's athletic. Are those you kids just gonna tell. be back? Well, you know, know. Young, young and young and supposed Belmonte. to be back for basketball. I think Belmonte will be. But what did Belmonte he had, do? I didn't. He had a shoulder, separated shoulder, I believe, in football. Jeez. And and obviously, young had a that's why fractured collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> had a fractured what arm fractured collarbone collarbone oh ouch yeah that's nasty yeah it's gonna that, both those injuries too are gonna impact you a little bit in basketball it might take a bit to get mm. get your feet wet and like, sure. get back to normal so huh. um well we will be covering as many of those games as we possibly can yep. and we'll go from there so yeah can you, i just i'm just picturing it now you know two two feet of snow and we're <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited that's basketball weather yeah, bud. yeah. it's super we got awesome. we got to figure out calling all ad's in in the west michigan area can we get a catch mark sports net parking spot right up by the gym yeah. so we don't have to walk through the snow exactly yeah, for sure. Zach, i love that and no, i love that you feeling you get inside and it's cool you do. oh yeah the, the <laughs> gyms are great yeah what's that is billy is that billy's spot then Billy, Billy has a VIP entrance at Montague. I can tell you that. Billy Jay has hooked him. him up. He comes in the back door, like a red carpet, blue carpet. Sorry, <laughs> is laid out. I mean, known as the Dolphins guy. Everybody knows him. Yep. Billy, you ready? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. That Billy, like. Everybody's He's not the best color commentator in the business for nothing, guys. You, that is not a Billy answer. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. That's a little more like it. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of like that line from Major League. He's not the best color commentator in the business for nothing, guys. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think you got it wrong, though. At, at Montague, I'm two. Uh, at Whitehall, I'm, I'm the Dolphins guy. Oh, oh I yeah. see. I what do you it. prefer? The Dolphins guy. Okay. <laughs> you don't like Tua, huh? He's all right. He's, he's all right. Big. I don't think he's got an arm. <laughs> That's kind of tough for a quarterback to not have an arm. True. Right? Yeah. He's average. All right. All right. All we're right. done. Time to, go. time to wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Catch Mark Sportsnet podcast. We're going to episode three this week, and we'll be back. We'll be back for more next week. So stay tuned. Sorry, Take buddy. care.